Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, and welcome to Bananas About Marketing. Welcome, welcome. My name is Christo. <laughs> And this is the lovely... Francisca Italy. And we are the founders of Basic Bananas and a few other fun businesses. Now, today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things to talk about ever, and that is branding. Using brand strategy and also brand positioning to your advantage so that you can build a business that is attractive to the right people. So how can you use branding, how can you use perception to attract the right market? Yes, very good. Now, in the early 80s, uh, in Santa Monica, in California, there was a Dolly Parton lookalike competition that was held. And um, all of these amazing Dolly Partons turned up. Um, it was actually predominantly drag queens running in the event. And um, now, how this competition would be judged would be judged by humans. Whoever um, was chosen as the very best version of Dolly Parton on the day would be the winner. So it was people looking at uh, versions of Dolly, Dolly Parton lookalikes, to choose who is the absolute very best version of Dolly Parton in this competition. So they had their event, all these Dollies dressed up, you know, perfectly looking like Dolly Parton, and um, they started to do their competition. The first person who was deemed was a very good version of Dolly Parton, um, looked, you know, amazingly like Dolly Parton, um, who was the winner. I'm not sure of the name of the person or anything, but the, uh, the very first person came number one, and then there was a second place getter, as deemed by the judges, who was deemed as the, the second best version of Dolly Parton in the event, as perceived by the judges, of course. Now, funnily enough, interestingly enough, the third place getter in this Dolly Parton lookalike competition was actually Dolly Parton herself. She had snuck into the competition and entered secretly, just um, happened to be there. So she went into this Dolly Parton lookalike competition and came third in her own lookalike competition. <laughs> now, how can it be possible that the absolute best Dolly, like Dolly herself can be perceived as not the, ber the very best version of Dolly. Like I'm not sure if Dolly herself can be any more Dolly. Uh, you know, it's a bit difficult. However, as perceived by people, she wasn't the best version of Dolly Parton there in the event. So this will be part of what we're going to have a look at uh, in this episode is to ensure that well, one thing, you don't come third in your own competition, and if you are the best product or service provider out there or expert as yourself, that you are perceived as the best as well um, because it all comes down to people's perception and exactly. humans' perception, whether they're going to choose you as the very best provider in your space or, or not. Yeah, and this sort of thing happens a lot in the business world too. But I think before we get into the lessons, do you want to just sing one of the Dolly Parton songs in case people don't know who Dolly Parton is? I think Jolene is a good song. Not really, but if I have to. Come on, let's Jolene, do it. Jolene, you do it. Jolene. <laughs> Jolene. Yeah, Jolene. Right, yeah. My favorite song in the world is Jolene. It's by Dolly Parton. Didn't she write that song in like it a... It is a very in, good song. Didn't she write three hit ago. songs in one day or something like that? I have no Someone idea, told me that. but it's a really cool song. But check I like her out, she's, she's great. But this lesson is not yeah. about Dolly Parton, but about perception and about positioning. <laughs> so here is just a, a, a few slide, a, a few screenshots to share with you what positioning and perception can do to you. So positioning is really all about creating the right perception in the market for your business to be seen by the right people and in the right light. Now, if you do this really well, which is what we're going to share with you today, you will attract great opportunities like this, media opportunities. So this is for one of our businesses, Basic Bananas, because we actually we will share with you a little bit behind the scenes today. Let's do that. We'll share with you behind the scenes of Basic Bananas how we go about using brand positioning. But because of it and because of positioning the business in a very unique way, which is what you're going to learn today, we get a lot of media opportunities. So we get approached by a lot of media to, to talk about specific topics, usually marketing and entrepreneurship. So you can do the same for mm. your business. You just have to find a way to be seen as an expert and to be able to stand out and to be seen as unique in your industry. Something, something to think about on that, on that slide here is you, you have to be 
talk aboutable to be talked about. Like the, you have to give the world something to say if you want them to say something about yeah. you. Uh, we see a lot of basic bananas businesses come to us and it's like they've tried to fit in in their industry, like they want to fit in in their space and they look at their competitors to see what they should do and how they should market their business. And just because they see someone else marketing in some way, people tend to assume that it must work for them. Um, now, we know it <laughs> firsthand um, and see it time and again, time again that it's not the reality. Just because somebody's doing something doesn't mean that it's working at all. Um, so ideally, what we want to do is not copy others in our market. We at don't want to look like others in our space. We want to be talk aboutable. Now, we don't know if that's actually a real word or not. I don't think it's a word, but it's up. a cool word. But we'll run with it. <laughs> if you don't, like, think of it this way. If you don't give people something to say, they're not going to say anything about you. Um, and some of your best marketing, if you want to really kind of own your space and own your um, your industry, whether it's in your local community or you want to play at a bigger level and be really known for something, um, you better give them something to say because your best marketers are going to become people, are going to become your your customers, are going to become your, your tribe, you know, like your raving fans. And if you don't give them anything to say, they're not going to say anything about you. Uh, if you want it to be viral and really want to own the space, you have to be known for something. Uh, the same goes with media. If you don't give the media anything to say about you, and sometimes this can seem like almost stupid little things. You know, it can almost seem like sometimes people look at stuff and we go, oh, no, I don't need to do that little thing or that little point of difference or that it seems a bit ridiculous. It's sometimes the little things that can almost seem a little bit ridiculous that are the things that make the world of difference. So we'll be going through how to, how yeah, to do we'll totally this. Yeah, totally share with you. But it's kind of the same goes with the media. You know, the media aren't going to say anything about you if you don't give the media anything to say. You have to give them something to say about your business. It's got to be something to, that, that's a newsworthy for them to say something. If there's nothing to talk aboutable, they're not going to talk about exactly. you either. And how good is free media? It is amazing. And also, you know, in today's market, because it's so busy and, and we get hit by, what's the latest figure, 7,000 whatever marketing pieces? 2,000 bits a day. And it depends. If you live on a lonely island, you might have less than 2,000 marketing bits per day. Then you market to buy a crab and, <laughs> a, and a dolphin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well. But if you're living in, in New York or in Sydney or in a busy city, you, <laughs> you get hit all the time by different marketing pieces. It's busy and it's it's confusing sometimes to know who you want to work with. So for you as a business, you need to figure out ways to stand out. You need to figure out ways to get through to that person. And remember, we spoke about in the first episode about who is that person. We should actually quickly talk about that. Hmm. So you don't really want to be attractive to everyone, but you want to be attractive to your niche, to your target market. Did you want to say something about that? Because you love talking about that. I do love talking about it, you don't do. I? Um, you do. You definitely need to be attractive to your niche market, like trying to market to everyone and anyone. Imagine the world's like a cluttered, cluttered space, like noisy, noisy, noisy marketing world. There's so much marketing noise out there that if you're trying to say your 15 things to, to, to 15 different people or you're trying to be known for 15 different things, it's never going to happen. You know, imagine I might be the biggest, let's say I was a customer of, of Francisca's business and I might be her most crazy, raving, loyal customer, and I love her business like crazy mad. And of course you would. You I would, would but yeah. I am partners with you, but I would, and I do. And if imagine I just, whatever, anyone, no matter what that business is, I'm still not going to go away to my best friend and spend 15 minutes talking about her. Um, she's not going to become known for, you know, 15 different things. She might become known for two or three things. I might go to my best friend and I might say two or three words um, about her business, but I'm not going to rave on for 15 minutes. Um, so it's kind of like when, when we become known for something, uh, that something we we'll need to think about, well, what is attractive to that ideal client that you want to attract. Like, what is that something you want to be known for? It's got to obviously be attractive to a someone. If we're trying to be known for 15 different things because we want to be attractive to everybody, well, we're never really going to become known to anyone or known for anything. Um, we, want to, we need to define exactly who we're trying to attract. And, and on that one, um, it can sometimes, just a little insight into this one too, it can sometimes be a specific product. Like, let's say if you had a, like, the, like one product you sell, um, if this thing is your easiest sale, like most common sale, if whatever that product is, 
it could be worth marketing to just become known for that thing, to being the best provider of that one thing. And then all the other products you sell could be on sales. You know, that's by selling that first product, that's how you let them know about all the other products. Or if it's not a product, it could be a service that you provide. So it could be worth, you know, is there an easier sale that you make from time to time? Generally, that's like this one service that you provide. Well, maybe it could be worth putting that out to the world because if that's the easiest sale, that's going to get you the easiest um, return on investment from sales of that service or that product. And by selling that service, getting them through the door on that thing, it could be then that you uh, you on sell the next things. You know, you let them know about all the other products or services. Um, but it's not going to happen unless you're very clear on who you're who you're trying to attract. So we need to know exactly who it is. Um, and it makes life a lot easier when you're very clear on totally. who you're trying to attract. Yeah. Like the more you know about, um, I could go on for two weeks about you niche. Could. So you don't want to get me you started could. here. But the reality is, the more you understand about who you're trying to attract, the easier it will become to attract them. Like if you know how to speak their language, you know what they're interested in, you know what can make them laugh, you know what can make them cry, you, you basically, um, you know, you can, you know what to put on social media to engage them, you know what to put on your blog, you know what to put on your newsletter, you know how to attract them, you know what marketing will appeal to them. So obviously, yeah, um, yeah but I'll, I'll stop there because I could go yeah, on for like two weeks on this. Because <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot more here to share with you. And the, the thing that, that we like to share now is really the four steps or the four phases that you can go through in your business to create that perception, to make sure that you don't come third in your own competition, to make sure that you are being perceived as the business that you, however you want to be perceived. So the four stages are perception. We look at that first. Then we look at differentiation. So how can you differentiate? We got lots of examples and case studies and businesses that we've worked with that we're going to share with you how they did it. And then we can look at amplification. So how can you amplify that perception that you've created? And lastly, we're going to look at reinvention. Reinvention and really looking at some people and case studies and businesses that have used reinvention to make a comeback. This is going to be very fun. So let's start with the first one, perception. Yes. Do you want to share a little bit why perception? Why is perception so important? Well, perception, if we look at it as a, the umbrella kind of thing of perception, um, perception is what's going to help people to define whether or help people to decide whether you are worth the money they're going to spend on you. Perception is what's going to influence people to decide whether to buy from you or another service, especially if you sell the same products and things. Um, perception will also help to define whether, you know, I would spend a high-end amount of money with, from you, you know, if you're a higher end offering and I'll spend more money on you, or if you're a low end, you know, um, it's kind of like the, the way that we, we need to work here and the way that we build our perception is people have to look at working um, with you and the weight, the value of working with you has to, or buying your product or service has to outweigh their perceived value of the money that they are going to spend on you. Um, it's kind of like we have to, and that's said, and you see this all the time in the market, like why would somebody spend $3,000 on a Gucci handbag when there's probably a handbag at Target, you know, for, for $100. And, you know, why would they spend that? Because the perceived value that they'll get from that bag outweighs the perceived value of the money that they're going to hand over. So this is part of what we're going to yeah, go through here exactly. and, and help us to be, to be known for something. And perception also creates your, your reality. So it really, nothing, everything that we have, whether it's, it's a book or a cup or, or a prop here, everything has a certain perception and it is what we give it so even this also applies to your personal brand you might want to ask yourself how you want to be perceived and then figure out is this how I am being perceived because you have a choice to do that and in a business as a business owner it is your responsibility to to influence that perception of your business. If you don't build a perception of your business, if you don't influence that, someone else will influence your perception. It, everything has a perception. This pillow has a perception, this chair, mm -hmm. everything has a perception. So you, it's your choice and your duty as a business owner to choose the perception that. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.